Hi, I'm Pavle Sabic, and I'm an application specialist in the S&P Capital IQ product and content team. What I'm going to do today is a very quick exercise in assessing the credit health of unrated corporates using a portfolio of 143 developed and emerging market companies, focusing on EMEA metals and mining industry. This is completed using our analytical development group's qualitative credit health assessment called Credit Model, which uses a specific country risk assessment for emerging markets. So let's first look at the credit model and then discuss why the country risk aspect is so important. We'll look at one company to begin with. We see here South Africa Kumba Iron Ore. We see how the quantitative credit health assessment is applied. Point one shows a lowercase credit score, in this case triple B, which is derived from financial metrics specific to the region, country and industry as are shown in this part here. Point two shows sensitivity of these metrics to the overall credit score. So debt that we've highlighted here, debt over debt plus equity, in this case has the top rank of sensitivity. And point three, average historic default frequencies for one, three and five years for this particular S&P rating. Before we show how this is applied to all 143 companies and their scores, I want to discuss the country risk which is used in the regression process of this credit model. This is what I like to call the financial weather report that is coming up right now. The x-axis shows the sovereign ratings, S&P sovereign ratings. The y-axis shows the S&P capital IQ's country risk scores. Sovereign ratings look at the ability and the willingness of a sovereign to meet its debt obligations, while the country risk scores from S&P Capital IQ look at what it's like to actually do business on the ground in that country. It looks at Gini coefficient, global competitiveness, ease of doing business and other transparent and respected indices. And I say financial weather report because there is a forward-looking flavor in the country risk methodology. Here we see the divergence between the country risk and the sovereign risk for selected countries. The grey horizontal line across the middle of the screen is where the country risk and the sovereign risk are identical. Anything above this line has a higher country risk than the sovereign risk. Below the line, the opposite stands. And the higher the number, the more risky. Now, when we look at the biggest divergence, we kind of focus over here on this far section. So we see the sovereign rating is a lot less or a lot higher um, risk than the actual country score. Over here, we have an opposite case. But let's look at four specific examples. Russia, to start off with. Russia is here, with a bit of a squiggly line in there as well. There's a country risk of 13, and which could be mapped to a double B negative. Uh, the sovereign risk is down here at 9. So this can be mapped to a triple B. Kuwait is also above the gray line, and this is just here which shows that there is a higher country risk than the sovereign risk. If, there is, if it falls between these two red lines that we're going to annotate here, then that is not a significant divergence. What we consider significant is the companies that we've, or the countries that I've just annotated. Japan is below the gray line, and we see here, which means that there's a lower country risk than the sovereign risk. South Africa, which is the yellow dot here, is also just below the gray line, although it's not outside of this major divergence. Africa has a country risk of eight and a sovereign risk of nine. Where this country risk assessment is important is when applying credit assessments to corporates, particularly in the emerging markets. Emerging markets have a far greater divergence between the sovereign rating and the country risk, meaning the standard sovereign cap, which is ubiquitously used in the credit models, is not justifiable when looking at emerging market corporates. We can now apply the credit model to our portfolio of 143 countries. But first, if we look at just the rated companies in our portfolio, of which there are 19 out of 143, we don't have a full picture. We still have 124 unrated companies with no assessment. So these 19 companies, none of them are rated in the higher section of S&P ratings. 
not much are down here either. But we see there is a major focus within the triple B, triple B negative just above the investment grade section. Still, we have a huge gap in our portfolio where we don't have the analysis. And this is why S&P Capital IQ's approach to analyzing the unrated universe is so important. With our quantitative credit assessment of, with using the credit model, which includes the country risk aspect that I've uh, just talked about, we have a full credit analysis of our portfolio of 143 companies. So it's 143 metal and mining companies. Again, there's not much over here in terms of the higher, uh, country, uh, higher credit model score. This, is, as you see here, is a lowercase rating. We see that there's a big drop off here to the triple C's. And generally, what we see is a huge cluster just below the investment grade line over here. So it really goes to show when you're analyzing these industries how the credit model and how the credit worthiness stands. But for more details on the tools and even how they can apply to the private sector, other regions and industries, please visit www.spcapitaliq.com.